Hello, and welcome to the webinar for the three MAs in the Department of History of Art, the MA History of Art, MA History of Architecture, and MA History of Photography, and their associated postgraduate certificates and postgraduate diplomas. My name is Leslie Topp. I'm a professor here in the Department of History of Art, uh, and I teach on, uh, on all these programs, especially History of Architecture, but I've taught on on all the programs and, uh, and I'm here to talk about all of them to you today. I'll be going through um, several slides and giving you information about the program and then very much look forward to your questions uh, in the chat session afterwards. So as I mentioned, that what we're dealing with in this webinar are um, three programs in the Department of History of Art. They're all postgraduate programs, and they're main, the headings are History of Art, History of Architecture, and History of Photography. In each of those subjects, we, have, uh, we offer a postgraduate certificate, a postgraduate diploma, and an MA. But just for the purposes of, uh, of clarity, and so that I'm not um, having to say that mouthful each time. I'll just refer to each of those programs as the MA. Uh, but if you have particular questions about the postgraduate certificate or postgraduate diploma, please do let me know afterwards. A, a first word quickly about Birkbeck. Um, the, all these programs are based at uh, uh, the university that's known as Birkbeck, which is part of the University of London. And Birkbeck is a very distinctive university. It's got a long and distinguished history. Uh, it was founded in 1823 to offer a full university education to working Londoners. And ever since then, it's operated on the model of e teaching in the evenings. So all the teaching at Birkbeck almost without exception, happens uh, in the evenings um, from 6 p.m. onwards. Uh, Birkbeck has been part of the University of London since 1920, um, and it offers a, a full range of undergraduate and postgraduate degrees, as well as uh, having a very lively program of research and PhD students. So it's a combination of a university that broadens access out to a wide selection of people, while at the same time being very research intensive. The Department of History of Art uh, is one of the largest departments um, in the discipline in, in the UK. We have 14 full-time members of staff. We are, a lot of us have been teaching at Birkbeck for a long time, and we're all uh, very active in, in research and publication. Uh, in this slide, you can see uh, book covers for a whole series of recent books that have come out in the past couple of years, authored by uh, full-time members of the faculty that you'll be working with if you come and, and, um, and study with us here at Birkbeck. The department um, is distinctive because it houses a whole series of, uh, of very active research centers. Um, this shows you the, the web page of the Architecture, Space and Society Center. There's also the Center for Museum Cultures and the History and Theory of Photography Research Center. Um, we have research going on both within those centers and beyond them across the department, uh, including um, a lot of research in early period topics uh, to do with medieval uh, and Renaissance art. A word then about the entry requirements for, uh, for our MA programs um, in these three areas. What we require uh, in, um, in terms of a, a first degree is a, a first degree in a relevant subject. Now that can be history of art itself, but it doesn't need to be. It could be a topic like history, it could be fine art, it could be uh, photography, for instance, it could be an architecture degree. Um, it could be uh, history or, or English, one of the humanities degrees. Um, the, we, in terms of the level of degree, we require at least a second class degree, a 2-2 uh, in, in British terms. And if you have a degree from another country, we're very happy to, for you to consult with us on the level of degree you have and whether that would be, uh, whether that meets our entrance criteria. 
You can also apply uh, based on your relevant work experience. Um, so for instance, if you've done a degree in, a, in, an, in an area outside of history of art or outside of the humanities, but you've been working in the area of uh, the visual arts for some time, then we can, uh, we can of course discuss that with you. We pride ourselves at Birkbeck in treating each application on a, a case by case basis. Another thing to know about is our graduate certificate in history of art and architecture. This is a conversion course. It's a one year part time course that's particularly intended for students who have done a degree in an area quite far removed from the history of art. So say you've done a business degree or a law degree initially, uh, but you would like to go on and do an, uh, a master's degree in, in uh, the history of art or an allied area, then you can come, uh, come and do the graduate certificate for one year part time. And that um, puts you in the position, a very good position then to apply for one of our MAs. And indeed, if you get a merit or above, then you automatically get accepted onto the MA. The way that you apply for our MAs is simply online. So if you um, you go straight to uh, to the the web page for one of our MAs simply by googling the MA at Birkbeck, that'll take you right there, and you can see um, the the apply now button, and the entire application happens online. We also are very happy to uh, advise you on your application and also on your decision whether to apply or. And the person to get in touch with about that is our admissions tutor, uh, who is an academic in the department, Dr. Dorigan Caldwell, and you can see her email address on this slide. Now I want to talk to you about the uh, the kind of key features of of the three MA programs. And th this is shared by these three MA programs. It's worth saying that these three MA programs are very much integrated with each other. So for instance, they share a core course. Everyone on all three MAs comes together um, into the, the, the first uh, module that everybody takes, which is called Frameworks. Uh, and it is a newly designed core course that we're running in this academic year for the first time. Uh, we're really, really pleased with it. It, um, it deals with all the different conceptual um, and methodological uh, ideas that you really need to get a grasp on in order to um, then pursue the rest of the MA. Um, and it is taught by a range of people in the department. So you get exposed to, uh, to um, at least six or seven different lecturers in the department uh, in the course of frameworks. It also runs alongside a research skills program of seminars. Um, and the, it consists of large lectures and then smaller seminar groups where you get to discuss particular examples of art, architecture, and photography in small groups with a dedicated tutor. Um, you also uh, on the program have a very wide cho choice of option modules uh, to take um, as part of the program. You will each be taking two of these option modules and later on in the presentation, I'll give you a, a, a a kind of indicative list of the types of things we offer, but they're an opportunity to, to, to learn about particular areas of the history of art in more depth uh, and to engage in a lot of, um, of uh, really high level discussion with fellow students and with, with the, the lecturers teaching those options uh, about that particular aspect of history of art. For those in the uh, photography and architecture um, MAs, they are also the opportunity to really get to grips with that subject matter, which of course is contained in the core course as well, uh, but it's in the options where you're specializing more. Um, the options are taught in very small seminar based classes with a maximum of 18 students and they the typical number of students would be in the mid 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 teens uh, about 15 or so. Um, you have the option of doing a work placement on any of these MAs. Uh, we are uh, very proud of our work placement module, which places students in um, in jobs in the the rich um, museum and archive sector uh, in London. Uh, we set up those jobs for you, um, and you do those as an integrated part of your program. So, having done uh, the job, which is about two to three months part time, you then uh, write up a, um, a 5000 word essay reflecting on that experience and bringing to bear um, the, the, the museological and art historical research that you've done. 
Uh, and then the final part of the of the program is a dissertation, uh, which is 15,000 words and is on, on a topic of your choice. You work on that in conjunction with an expert supervisor in that area. Uh, and that's an immensely rewarding conclusion um, to your, uh, your, your program of study. It's also worth mentioning the um, study trip abroad. Every year we organize a, a trip for students at any level within our department. Uh, it ends up usually being about 40 students who go with two expert guides uh, to a European city. Um, in the past, we've gone to Rome, Florence, Venice, Vienna, Paris, Berlin uh, are, are some of the examples of cities that that trip has gone to. And that's a fantastic opportunity to go and really um, experience works of art and architecture in the flesh. Of course, London itself is an amazing resource um, for museums and collections and architecture as well. Uh, and many of our, our option modules have class visits incorporated in them where you go with the group of people in your class and, uh, and the, the lecturer as well um, to visit particular collections uh, and sites and go on walking trips, etc. You get a chance at Birkbeck to, to learn with research active academics. So what we engage in here is referred to as research led teaching. For instance, all the option modules are developed in areas where we have particular research expertise um, and as lectures, we can bring that to bear. Um, you also get to study with a really vibrant and diverse cohort of students. Birkbeck students walks of life, all stages of their lives and careers. They are um, really interesting people to get to know. Uh, they bring a lot of life experience and work experience to discussions in the classroom. And they form a really useful network as well for uh, future connections in terms of career possibilities in the future. Many of them are already working in the field, in museums, um, in the, uh, the visual arts sector um, and architecture sector in, in London. The assessment for the course takes the form entirely of coursework. There are no exams on any of our, our MAs. Um, for the most part, you'll be writing long essays. The standard length of an essay is 5,000 words. I mentioned the dissertation already, which is 15,000 words. Uh, there's also um, the work placement essay. And if you don't want to do a work placement, you opt instead for something called a research project, which is a slightly longer essay of 6,000 words, again, on a topic of your particular um, of your particular choice. Uh, those, your, your assessment is supported by tutorials. You have access to your tutors um, at any given time or at the time that you, you arrange with each other uh, to have one-on-one -on -one, uh, support sessions on your, your assessment. You, you will also be asked to do presentations. The presentations aren't assessed, but they're a really useful uh, opportunity to practice your presentation skills in a supportive atmosphere in these small seminar groups, uh, and then to get feedback on your ideas, including feedback on work in progress, um, on your, your dissertation, on, um, on your essays, etc. What I'm showing you now on the slide is a um, sample timetable for your your if you were a full time student for your first term, and this gives you an idea of when you actually are required to be in the classroom. I mentioned already that all the teaching is in the evening, so those times that you can see on the slide refer to PM. Um, the frameworks uh, always happens on a Thursday evening and goes from 6 to 7.20 for the lecture element. There's then a break and then we meet again for seminars and research skills sessions from 7.40 till 9. Uh, you then, uh, if you're a full time student, alongside that you take your first option, which could be on one of the other evenings of the week. Um, running from 6 to, to, to 7.20 um, and, uh, and so that would be the a typical first term timetable. You're very welcome to ask us for any information about how things then develop over the rest of your course, but it gives you an idea. This slide shows the part time timetable, which if you're part time means you're just coming in on the Thursday evenings. And that's that's more or less the case for the, the whole two years of the part time course is that you come in just on one evening a week. The evening for the other terms will depend on which option it is you choose to study. 
the next two slides contain indicative, or the next three slides, I should say, indicative option modules, um, including for the three different MAs. It's important to indicate that we, we have a fresh offering of option modules each year. So we um, have new staff coming on board. We have new, we have existing staff developing new option modules. Um, and so it, it's, uh, you know, this exciting moment in March of each year where we unveil our options for the following academic year. That means that at this stage, uh, when we're talking about coming in for uh, 2020, uh, 21, we um, or, uh, or or future years, what we can offer you is an indicative list. So these are the op types of option modules that have been offered in the past. Some of them will be offered again, um, but some of them won't. Uh, and but this gives you an idea of the kind of way in which the the option modules are crafted and and honed down. Uh, for architecture, you can see the list there, uh, ranging from um, from modern and contemporary to uh, prehistoric, uh, medieval, um, and uh, the Rome option, which covers um, uh, ancient all the way to, to the present day. And likewise, the, the history of photography modules, uh, which cover various aspects of photography history and theory, um, sometimes as associated with particular topics like fashioning the body or the book unbound. Uh, I've talked about work placements. Um, other things to mention that are raised on this slide, the, the, we have a, an active gallery that has regular exhibitions in it in the, the School of Arts building. We have um, a, a, the Murray Lecture, which happens every other year. And is we have very big names coming in to give that public lecture, which is open for free to all of our, our students. TJ Clark, the very eminent art historian, uh, gave the last one just a month ago. Um, Arts Week. A really lively program of events uh, that that span the whole School of Arts, which also contains the departments of of English, um, uh, cultures and languages, and film, media, and cultural studies. Um, we also have we have um, free membership of the Institute of Contemporary Arts in London available to you. You have an opportunity to apply for a fellowship that would take you to Venice to work at the Venice Biennale. And there are a whole series of bursaries and scholarships available, the details of which will be available soon. So that brings me to the end of my uh, my presentation. I hope that's useful. Um, those slides will continue to be available to you. And I'm very much looking forward to your questions uh, in the next web chat part of the proceedings. OK, hello. Um, uh, so we're, we now move to the web chat part of the proceedings. And there have been a couple of, of uh, questions already submitted. Thank you very much. So uh, what I'll do is I'll read out the question and then answer uh, each question in turn. Um, the, the first question says, um, what is the difference between the diploma? Right. So um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, uh, the, the all of the of what I for those awards as well. But basically, each of those awards is. Is the shortest of the awards, um, so that includes and I'm just glancing over at my computer screen to remind myself uh, that is a one year part time course uh, that includes that core course frameworks, which I mentioned. Um, but um, one option. Is, so in the autumn, you do frameworks in the spring term, you do one option module. And if you just finish with that, then you come away with the postgraduate certificate, whether that's in history of art history of uh, architecture or history of photography. Um, the postgraduate diploma then is uh, pretty much a thing on the MA course except the dissertation. So it consists of the core course, two option modules, and then the research project or the work placement. So everything but the dissertation. And that can be studied part time um, over, uh, over two years or full time in one year. Uh, okay, so the next question is, um, when's the deadline for submitting your application? Very good question. Uh, we don't, in fact, have a deadline. We are very happy to take applications right up until the beginning of the academic year. The year begins at the beginning of October uh, 2020. 
So um, you, you can apply any time up until that point. We do, however, encourage you to apply as soon as you know that you um, are, want to do the program, put your application in, uh, and that means that things will move, move along more quickly. And come the summertime, you'll get access then to Birkbeck resources, to the library, to what we have up online uh, to, to um, help you prepare for the course ahead. Um, the next question is, can, can students uh, get involved with research centers? Uh, absolutely. So uh, we all the, the events that research centers um, hold uh, are, are accessible to students and are, are, are promoted to students. I have a um, as head of department, uh, I have a, um, a blog that I put out every other week that highlights all the different events that are coming up in the various research centers and their websites, of course, advertise those too. And so we very much you know, welcome students and often have students um, in the audiences for the sessions and they can, you know, part, they can interact with our visiting speakers, ask questions, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, you know, we, we very much welcome student involvement. And I'm just waiting for another question, which is, is currently being typed. Yes, so there's a question here to, to confirm qualifications are suitable to get onto the MA architectural history? Absolutely. So I think the question there is if you have an architecture degree, you're a practicing architect, you've done an architectural training, would that be adequate to get onto the MA architectural history? Um, yes, absolutely. And we, we, we do expect on that, on that particular uh, MA that we would have, we have several. Always had people in in all of our MAs who have architecture backgrounds, so that would certainly be suitable. Uh, next question is: are, are there many international students at Birkbeck? That's also a very good question. And there are there are many international students. We get students um, really from all over the world. Uh, we have um, students from Canada, from from the US, from and I'm Canadian myself. We have actually a very international uh, faculty or, or um, series of lecturers as well. Um, we have uh, students from China, from India, from the Caribbean, uh, from Africa. So yes, we do have lots of international students, uh, and we we very much welcome you and uh, and you know provide a good good experience for you here. All right, the next question. OK, so the, uh, um, just a follow up question, first of all, for about international students, are there social groups for the international students? Uh, and yes, indeed, there are uh, there are various social events organized specifically for international students. And in general, we have um, you know, rich student life. We have a history of art society that uh, organize events and visits to galleries for students you know, organized for by students for students um, and uh, and you know students at all levels are encouraged to get involved in those. We also have an end of term party um, or an end of academic year party uh, where which is a really nice lively event where everyone gets together. Uh, and I'm certainly aware that that people get to know each other well on these small option modules and uh, and um, and then you know get together socially as well, go out to the, the pub or whatever it is they want to do. Uh, and there's another question for the part time course. How many hours a week do you think you would need to allow? Right. So you would be in terms of contact hours, you'd be coming in for one evening a week. Uh, and in the autumn term, that would be from six to nine normally. Um, and then in the other terms, it would normally be from six to seven thirty. So that's the contact. Hour. Those are the contact hours. But in addition to that, you should allow about 10 to 12 hours of independent study. That will uh, vary um, from week to week because, of course, you'll be probably dedicating more time as the assessment deadlines approach and you're working on your essays in addition to the preparation for each week. Um, but but that, that gives you a rough idea of what to allow as a part-time student. 
Um, it's worth saying that, that uh, I would say pretty much all of our part-time students are also working or have other um, really major commitments in their lives um, with family and so on, uh, and, and they find it manageable. It's a model that's you know, worked for many, many years um, for part-time students. We're also very able to be flexible. So we, are, we understand that people have very busy lives and often lives that where you know unexpected things will occur, and so we can um, support you through that and make it possible. Uh, with uh, you know, we have a very clear system where if you need extra time on your assessment, for instance, you can you can request that. Um, you know, as long as you can give us a bit of evidence about why you need that. Okay. Well, so that seems to be the questions for now. Thank you very much for those very good questions. Um, and uh, this, my, the presentation with the slides and the Q&A afterwards are, will all be available on YouTube at the Birkbeck channel. Um, please, you know, be in touch with us on the slides. You would, would have seen the, the email address for Dorgan Caldwell our admissions tutor that means she's the main person that you would interact with as you make your application and she's very happy to answer any questions that you might have we also have open evenings coming up um, or i should say open days they're being held on saturday this year uh, and we'd be very happy to see you at those you can if you just google uh, open days birkbeck you'll see all the dates for those and you can book in for those and there you can talk to members of uh, of the department um, about any questions you have about your study. So I hope that was useful. Thank you very much for joining us.